Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches, back to the days of the gold rush, with Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet... The Challenge of the Yukon. Man, oh man, what a treat it is to dive into a heaping bowl full of Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat topped with milk and your favorite fruit. Mmm, what a breakfast! Say, these king-size, ready-to-serve premium grains of wheat or rice are shot from guns. Yes, actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender, bigger and better tasting. Tomorrow, sure, get off to a flying start with this breakfast treat. Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police was returning to Dawson City from his regular patrol. It was a clear, bright day, and even the dogs seemed to be in high spirits as they pulled the sled swiftly over the smooth trail. King, the sergeant's lead dog, raised his head and gave a welcoming bark as a man came out of the woods up ahead. As they approached him, the Mountie recognized Jean Dupre, a friendly French-Canadian trapper. Oh, King! How are you, Huskies? Hello, Jean. How are you? Sergeant Preston, it is you. Bonjour, bonjour. And that fine dog, King. <laughs> you hear him say hello to me? He remembers you all right. You been hunting? We oui, and I have very good luck. Just a little while back, I killed big moose back here in the woods. Oh? I go back to my cabin now to get dog team to pull him home. Well, uh, your cabin's quite far from here. How about letting me take the moose in for you? I've had an easy patrol and ahead of schedule. Well, that would save me much time and work, Sergeant. You are very kind. Dogs are fresh. Hadn't been far today. Be glad to do it. Merci. For this, I will give you fine dinner when we get back to my cabin. A good steak of that moose we bring back. <laughs> <laughs> that will taste good, no? I was hoping you'd suggest that, Gene. I haven't had a good meal of fresh meat for over a week. Lead the way. Unking! As Sergeant Preston and Gene approached the carcass of the moose about a mile back in the forest... They saw the ground around it stained crimson and bits of hide and bone strewn about. The Mountie stopped the yelping dog some distance from the dead animal. Oh, King! Oh, you husky! Quiet! Quiet now! Nom de nom. Some animal have been here since I leave. Gene, it looks as if a wolf had his dinner off your hose. He must take some with him. No wolf could eat so much in such short time. Say, look at these tracks. No wolf made these unless it's the biggest wolf in the Yukon. Ah, them look like tracks of big dog. A very big dog. I wonder what kind he is. Look at this track. It is clear in snow. Might be a St. Bernard. Maybe he make good sled dog if we catch him. Let's track him, Gene. I'd like to get a look at him. We. Oui. So would I. I'll take King with us and leave the team here. I'll tie them so they won't finish up your moose. This track, they lead this way. As the trapper and the Mountie followed the huge tracks of the dog through the woods, they came to a small clearing... Here again, the fresh snow was stained and trampled, and King whined and growled as they approached it. Quiet, King. Look, Sergeant. Here is where that dog eats what he carry away. See? Marks on but snow. But he didn't eat alone. Look at these tracks. Huh? A wolf. You think he lets wolf eat with him and they not fight? Must be his mate. It's odd, though. Can't understand why the wolf didn't go with him to dead moose. That is strange. Maybe wolf is afraid of man scent, and dog he is not. Man scent around a carcass doesn't bother wolves, and there's fresh meat to be had. Must be another reason. They cannot be far away from here. Let's keep on following them, Gene. Oh, I'd uh, better put a leash on King, though. Come here, fella. Don't want you scaring those animals away, old boy. There. 
Now you can help us track them without getting too far ahead of me. Maybe from top of that hill we can see them. That's where their tracks lead. Come on, King. After the boy. Though Sergeant Preston and Jean traveled fast, it was some time before they neared the pair they were seeking. The tracks at times led over a hard, smooth crust of snow. And the Mountie and Trapper could not have followed them if King had not led them, following the scent rather than trusting to his eyes alone. At last, they topped a small ridge that ran near a creek. King growled softly. And the sergeant knew they were close to their quarry. He cautioned Jean. Take it easy, Jean. You can tell by King's actions were close. It is good the wind she blow toward us. Be careful when we get to the top of this ridge. The creek runs along the other side of it, and they may have a cave nearby. Uh, them trees on top of ridge. They hide us if we come up behind them. Good idea, Jean. This way, King. There we are. You see anything? Uh, well, look. On the other side of the creek. What a dog. St. Bernard, I thought so. And a small gray one. She is female wolf. This is made all right. Something funny about this. She walks so close to him, either beside him or right behind him. I wonder... Me, I am good shot. From here, I could kill her without hurting that dog. Don't shoot her, Jean. I know now what's wrong with her. That wolf's blind. Huh? Blind? That's why the dog brought her the food. See how he's guiding her to that cave inside those rocks there? Look. You are right, Sergeant. She cannot see. She almost bumped into that rock. Uh, this I have never seen before. He's a beautiful dog. Look at those markings. White rough around his neck. They're lying down in front of the cave. I'm going to have a close look at them through my field glasses. We shoot her and get him for sled dog, no? No, Jean. That dog has fought some hard battles for her. His face is scarred and part of his left ear is gone. Here, look at him through the glasses. Uh, we, Sergeant, you are right. Oh, he lick her face. <laughs> a pair like that should not be separate. But he would make fine sled dog. If anything happens to her, he'll probably return to civilization. Oh, come on, Jane, let's go back. We shall go. No, old boy. You did a nice job of tracking them, but this is as far as we're going. Come on, King. We have to get back to Dawson. It was two nights after Sergeant Preston got back to Dawson that he was wakened after midnight by Ned Peterson, a prospector who lived in the town. Wind whistled about the barracks, and a heavy snowstorm piled drifts in the street. Ned looked like a snowman as he talked to the Mountie. There's been a bank robbery, Sergeant. Somebody robbed the bank and slugged the guy. I'll be dressed in a minute, Ned. Go on, tell me about it. Well, I stayed late at the Gold Nugget. Yes? We was having a game, and when I started home, I noticed the door of the bank swinging open and shut with the wind. I went over to see what had happened to Jim Kerr, the guard, and there he was on the floor, unconscious. Somebody had hit him over the head with a gun butt or something. He had a bad cut. How long ago do you think it happened? Well, I couldn't say, Sergeant. Jim was very weak, so I got him on a cot and bound up his head and come straight here for you. Hand me my parking net, please. Uh, here you are, Sergeant. Thanks. See anybody on the street? No. Of course, the wind was blowing something fierce. I was bent over to keep the snow out of my eyes, but... I think I'd have seen anyone with a dog team. I'm ready. Come on. Come on, King. Sergeant Preston hurried to Ned's house where Jim Kerr lay unconscious. The Mountie applied cold towels to Jim's head, and presently Jim opened his eyes and looked around in a bewildered manner. Take a swallow of this, Jim. That's it. A little more now. Now lie back. You're going to be all right. Sergeant Preston. The bank. We know it was robbed, Jim. You better not try to talk to you stronger. I, I'm all right. I can talk. Is it more than one man? Yeah, two. You know them? Ever seen them before? No. Never. Just got one look at the the one who hit me. Would you know him if you saw him again? I, I don't know. Maybe it was just the way the light was shining, but it looked as if he had a long, crooked nose like a beak. A long, crooked nose? Do you know anyone like that, man? Well, lots of people have crooked noses, Sergeant. Long and short. Yeah. His beard was black. That's all I can remember. Well, thanks, Jim. I'll uh, just take it easy. Well, it ain't much to go on, Sergeant. About a hundred people in this town have crooked noses and black beards. Well, look at me. I got a black beard and my nose is all mashed to one side from that fight I got into last summer. Well, that does make you a suspect, Ned. Jim knows almost everyone in town. If there been anyone from here, he'd have recognized him. This man must have been a complete stranger. He sure picked a perfect night to make a getaway. His tracks will be covered almost as soon as he makes them. 
But you've got to go on, Sergeant. I'd say he was pretty safe. It's not as bad as you think, Ned. The fact that the man's crooked nose was the first thing Jim noticed means it's his most prominent feature. I've had less than that to go on before. And you've solved some tough ones all right, Sergeant, but if this weather keeps up all day tomorrow, you'll have a hard time finding out where he went. You're right about that. If we only knew which direction he took. And again, he might be right here in town. <laughs> yes, King, old boy, this looks like a hard case. <laughs> the weather favored the two men who had robbed the bank in Dawson City. The following day, the wind had died down somewhat, and the snow still fell thickly, covering their tracks with a concealing blanket of white. Nick Pearson, his thick black beard sprinkled with snow, his beak-like nose red with cold, chuckled happily as he strode beside the dog sled on snowshoes. <laughs> it's all a question of timing. I knew we'd get away with this if we waited until the weather was right. Yes, yeah. <laughs> they'll never be able to track us now. Coming north instead of going towards the border makes it doubly safe. We can make a wide circle and hit the trail to the border later. Hey, look at that lead dog. He's hopping on three legs and stopping the team. What's wrong with you, you lop-eared mutt? Yeah, his foot is bleeding. Must have cut it on a sharp piece of ice or something. Give him a taste of the whip. That'll make him use it. Oh, there's no use doing that, Nick. Hey, this cut is deep. He can't pull with this foot. We have all the rotten luck. He's the strongest dog we've got, and this is a heavy load. It's hard enough for the five dogs to pull it as it is. I guess we'll have to take turns helping to pull with him. What'll we do with that dog? I'm not putting him on the sled. The load's too heavy. Well, all we can do is let him go. Think he'll follow us? No, sir. He'll go off in the woods and go wild again. These huskies like their freedom. We sure hate to let him go. Well... It's a lucky thing for him this happened. He had a tough job ahead. There you are, Tag. Get going. You take the first turn at the traces, Joe. I'll spell you when you're tired. Sure. But this is going to hold us up. Shut up and start pulling. We can't waste time. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Hmm. I wonder if we're going to have a visitor today. Well, sure enough. Hello there. Hi, pal. Say, you the fellow in charge here? Well, uh... Glad to meet you. Name's Scoop. Star reporter. That's me. Well, it's a pleasure, Scoop. What can we do for you? Well, sir, just looking around. Never tell where you'll run into a live wire story. Ah, maybe we can fix you up right here. For instance, how about a story on breakfast? Breakfast? You kidding? No. Ever hear of Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat? Sure, pal. Everybody's heard about them. They're shot from guns. Well, Scoop, did you ever taste anything better? Boy, Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat just melt in your mouth. Make breakfast a real treat. Confidentially, pal, I never tried them. What? Oh, look, Scoop, you don't know what you're missing. Here, try some now. Here's a bowl full of Quaker puffed wheat. Even got milk and sugar on them. Just taste these delicious, luscious, king-size golden grains. Man, oh man, they're exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. Mmm, not bad. In fact, they're terrific. You bet. And Quaker puffed rice tastes just as swell, too. Wow! Where has Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice been all my life? What a story. Gotta write this one up fast. Thanks, pal, and so long. <laughs> Well, sir, fellas and girls, I'll bet it's no news to you. I mean that for a swell-tasting breakfast, you can't beat Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. The ready-to-serve breakfast cereal shot from guns. And what's good news, too, is that wheat or rice shot from guns is good for you. Furnishes added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. So be sure to keep a supply of both delicious kinds on hand at all times. Remember, wheat or rice shot from guns is never sold in bags or bulk. Look for the famous big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. That way, you're sure to get the original, the one and only, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Now to continue our story. 
It was later that day when Nick and Joe took the trail that led through the forest. The soft snow made their progress difficult. Nick broke the trail ahead, while Joe hauled on the traces with the tired dogs. Suddenly, Nick stopped. Joe, listen. Oh, hello there. Now, what is it, Nick? I heard something over to the left beyond the trees. Yeah, it sounds like a big dog. Do you suppose there's a cabin back there in the woods? I don't think so. He sounds if he's in trouble. Maybe he got caught in a trap or something. Well, come on, let's find out. If there's a trapper with him, maybe he'll sell him to us. As the two men made their way toward the sound, they could see nothing that resembled a dog. But as they came closer, they found a huge hole dug in the ground. Branches had been spread over it, but these were broken. And the dog's barking came from the hole. Yeah, the dog is in that hole. Yeah, that's a bear trap. The Indians and Eskimos catch bear like that. Maybe our luck has changed, Joe. Well, here it is. Hey, our luck sure has changed. Look at him, Nick. A big St. Bernard. He's just what we need. What a big fella. He can drag our sled alone almost. Now be careful, he may be ugly. He's had plenty of fights. His left ear is half gone. He won't be ugly. He's too eager to get out of there. Now come on, we'll get ropes from this sled. If we get him out, we can control him with a whip. The big St. Bernard tried hard to escape. The men used ropes and a whip. and Finally got the dog hitched to the traces and started out. Nick and Joe took turns riding the runners of the sled as the big dog strained at the front of the team. When darkness fell, the men camped in a small clearing. The dogs were chained to the trees and lay in small furry heaps, exhausted. The deep silence of the Northland had settled about them when suddenly from a distance there came a long, lonely cry. The big St. Bernard raised his head, and then the cry came again drifting through the night like the call of a lonely ghost. The big dog rose, and with a growl, tried to break his chain. Joe! Joe, what's wrong with that dog? Oh, I'll see. I'll lie down, you. Is he trying to get away again? Yeah, he almost broke this chain. Wish we had a heavier one. And I'll put a rope on him, too. That ought to hold him. The following morning, Jean Dupre, starting for his trap line, saw two men camped off the trail. As he approached them, he noticed the big St. Bernard chained to the tree, and he stopped his dog team near the campfire where Joe was cooking breakfast. Oh, 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 oh. Bonjour, monsieur. Yeah, hello, Frenchy. You have a camp here for tonight? <laughs> Looks like it, don't it? That is fine big dog you got there. That St. Bernard. Yeah. He's worth three ordinary ones. Would you like to trade for a couple of yours? Who is this, Joe? I was just a trapper. I was trying to make a bargain with him. Trading him that St. Bernard. We don't want to do any trading. On your way, Frenchy. Mind your own business. Me? I am just stopped to say bonjour. You insult me. I twist that ugly beak you call nose. He didn't mean to insult you. We don't want any trouble. Ah, uh, mind your own business, he say. Mush! Mush! Joe, you fool. I told you not to talk to anybody. He's just a trapper. Would have looked suspicious if I hadn't. What's the idea of trying to trade that St. Bernard? Uh, he keeps trying to break away all the time. Twice he spread the links on that big chain. I don't know if we can hold him. Plenty of whip is all he needs. We'll hold him all right. Another heavy snowstorm began that day, and Jean Dupre came back to his cabin as soon as the early darkness fell. A light was burning inside. And as he entered, the welcome odor of stew greeted him. Sergeant Preston turned from the stove. Sergeant! Oh, bonjour. Hello, Jean. Hope you don't mind if I make myself at home. Ah, Sergeant, it'd make me very happy. To come home and find warm cabin and supper cooking, that does not often happen to Jean. <laughs> Hello, King. My stew isn't as good as yours, Jean, but I'll let you add the finishing touches. Uh, I saw your dog tied outside. That means you spend the night here, no? Like to. It's all right with you. Yeah, you know it is pleasure to have you. You are on regular patrol? Yes, and I'm also trying to find some men who robbed a bank in Dawson. Oh. I have no idea who they are or where they went, but I may pick up a lead somewhere. Bank robber? 
You know what these men look like? I have a vague description of one of them, but it applies to about every third man in the Yukon Territory. Oh, oh, oh me. I, I hope you do not think I do it. No, Dean, you're not a suspect. Hey, today, I see something that makes me very unhappy. Unhappy? We. Oui. You remember that fine dog we see that takes so good care of his mate, the blind wolf? Yes. Some men have caught him. They use him for sled dog. You sure it was the same one? We. Oui. His left ear is half chewed off. It is the same one I see through field glasses. Well, I guess if they caught him, there's nothing anybody could do about it. It's too bad, though. Me. I am so mad inside, I almost get in fight with man who insult me. Insulted you? He is not very friendly. When I ask about dog, he say to mind my own business. I say if he insult me, I twist that ugly beak he has for nose. Oh, I'm very mad. You mean you noticed he had a big nose? Oui. Very long and crooked. Ever seen him before? No. He is big man with black beard and big nose like beak. That's the way Ned described the bank robber, a nose like a beak. Hmm. Where were these men, Jean? Which way were they going? Well, that I cannot say. They are on trail in woods five miles from here. But the snow and the wind, it cover all track. I cannot tell if they go east or west. And it's been blowing all day. Even if we got back to the place where they camped last night, there won't be any sign of their trail. And that is true. And maybe this is not man you look for. Best lead I've had. You sure that was the same dog? Do you remember how he was marked? The one we saw had an unusual white ruff. Came down to a sharp point on his chest. Did this one have that marking? Oh, Sarge, oh, me. I do not know dogs like you. I see only that ear half chewed. I do not look for markings. If I were sure that was the dog, I could send a complete description of him to the border. I remember exactly how that dog looked. The man who talked to me... He said this dog tried to get away all the time. I think maybe he's trying to get back to his mate. Gene, the place we saw that St. Bernard isn't far from here, is it? I mean, uh, where the wolf and he had their cave? No, that is close. It takes just half hour to get there. Tomorrow morning we're getting up early and going there. But, Sergeant, the robbers, they would not be there. That's a chance, but I can't let this lead drop. If the dog isn't with his mate and there aren't any tracks of his around, we'll know these men have him. Another thing... If a mate doesn't come back, this wolf might try to follow him by scent, even though she's blind. I do not think she can. Anyway, we're going to find out if that St. Bernard's missing. I'll go there in the morning, Jean. The snow had stopped during the night, and the pale morning sunlight shone from a clear sky as the Mountie, with King beside him, followed Jean toward the wolf lair. As they topped the hill that overlooked the creek, the sergeant stopped and took out his field glasses. I can see that cave from here, Jean. But I have a look through my glasses before we get too close. Uh, no sign of them. There's a single set of tracks leading away from the cave. Can't tell from here what kind of tracks they are. I guess we'll have to go down there. Sergeant, you hear that? Yes, the wolf hound. Quiet, King. It, it come from that way, from that hill. I can see her, Jean. It's the wolf, all right. Up on top of that next hill. She's all alone. Poor thing. She starved without that dog to get her food. He's gone. She wouldn't be up there without him. And she cannot follow him or she would not be here. Doesn't dare leave this territory, I suppose. She can find her way back to the cave. Otherwise, she'd be lost. Maybe it would be kind to shoot her. Let's wait a while, Jean. I'll telegraph that description of the St. Bernard to the border. It's a slim lead, but it may work. What's wrong with you, boy? He hears something, maybe? Quiet, King. He's looking down there in the valley. Let's see what it is. I have heard a dog bark, Sergeant. There is something down there in the snow. I see him through my glasses, Jane. It's a big St. Bernard with a broken chain on his collar. He's headed for that hill where the wolf is. It is one I see. He has escaped. These men, they cannot hold him. And he's breaking a trail a yard wide through that snow. King and I can backtrack him and get on the trail of the men who had him. You go back for your dog team, Sergeant? No. I can make better time on snowshoes, taking the same shortcut that dog took. He's broken a nice trail through the snow for King. We should be able to catch those men before nightfall. One king. The sun was sinking toward the west as Joe and Nick plodded toward it. Joe was helping the four-dog team pull the heavy sled through the thick snow while Nick broke the trail ahead. Suddenly he staggered and almost fell. The dogs stopped and lay down in their tracks. I... I gotta stop, Nick. I, I can't go any farther. All right. We'll rest for a while. Not going to be easy to get to the border with these four mangy curs. They can hardly crawl now. Oh, what are they barking at? Shut up, you mongrels! 
And there's a man coming along the trail on snowshoes. Say, he's got a big dog with him. Maybe he'll sell him to us. Yeah. That's a good-looking animal. We got plenty of money. Maybe we can make a deal. Good evening. Howdy. You men about to make camp? No, we're resting. We lost one of our dogs, and it's rough going without him. Oh? We had to help haul the sled ourselves. It's heavy. Uh, we were just thinking, mister. Maybe you'd be willing to sell us that dog you have. We'd give you double what he's worth. And I imagine you'd be able to do it. With what you stole from the Dawson Bank. Why, what? Uh, Sergeant Nick. Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. Uh, Mounty, you got nothing on us. I will have when I examine the load you're carrying. You, get up and pull that canvas back. I want to see what you're carrying on that sled. Nick, what do you think? Sure, Joe. Let him look. The only way he'll find out, he picked on the wrong people. As Sergeant Preston bent over the sled, his back was half turned toward Nick. Quickly, Nick's hand stole inside his parka, and the sun caught a glint of steel as he withdrew his gun. But at that moment, King sprang. Get off me! Let go of my arm! All right. Take him away! Hold him, Help. boy. Get back. I've got his gun. Get up, Nick. This was all I needed to be sure I had the right men. You, you turned away on purpose. Yes. I knew King was watching you. Mm-hmm. This gold is in the bank at Dawson. On a charge of robbery and attempted murder, you two are under arrest in the name of the Queen. How did you trail us here? That's no... If I tell you that you were caught because of a blind wolf and her mate's loyalty, you probably wouldn't believe it. A blind wolf? What are you talking about? That's a long story. Maybe I'll tell it to you on the way back to jail. Watch them, King. <coughs> yes, old fella. This case is closed. <coughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's program. Say, here's a tip. Team up with a breakfast that's so popular with many a He-Man Hollywood movie star. It's swell-tasting Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice with milk and fruit. Check up right now. Make sure to have a good supply of both delicious kinds on hand for this coming weekend. And never forget, wheat or rice shot from guns is never sold in bags or bulk. Always buy the big Quaker red and blue package. That's your guarantee you're getting the original crisp, fresh Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker puffed wheat... And Quaker Puffed Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun. Listen Monday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the adventure of Mutiny on the Penguin. The Penguin was a schooner. Her master was engaged in a scientific survey. King and I saw the schooner offshore when we arrived at an Eskimo village. I went aboard to deliver mail, little suspecting that the mail would start a mutiny. But that's what happened. The captain and I were locked in a cabin. The ship was set on fire, and, well, we had a mighty hot time. Be sure to hear this exciting story Monday. Till then, this is Jay Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than...